friends welcome to the session in this session let's discuss about wildlife conservation what is wildlife wildlife means it is a collective term that includes animals bees butterfly crustaceans fish moths aquatic and land vegetation which form a part of a habitat wildlife it is a national resource and it maintains the ecological balance and it is beneficial for economic recreational and aesthetic purposes pollution climate change deforestation industrialization and population explosion it has destroyed the natural habitat of the wildlife hunting habitat reduction and land degradation it nearly threatened the biodiversity and it industrialized the world wildlife and biodiversity so the abundance of various species plants animals and microorganisms in the present natural environment of a specific region or a country all this are collectively known as biodiversity biodiversity is not uniformly distributed on the surface of the earth certain regions are very rich in certain species and they are known as hot spots on the basis of degree of threat leading to the extinction of species it follows three categories of wildlife endangered species vulnerable species and rare species endangered species are those whose number have been reduced to a critical level so this may become extinct in the future and some factors continue to operate vulnerable species are the species whose number are still abundant but they may become endangered in the future rare species these are the species which are threatened species and they are very less in number and they are usually confined to specific area endemic species the organisms or species that is confined to a definite region for their distribution are called endemic species this region may be a continent or a country or a province or even a small fresh water pool measures to conserve wildlife biodiversity is a non renewable resource it means that cannot be regained once it is used the following two strategies are used for conservation of biodiversity and wildlife in situ conservation and ex situ conservation in situ conservation means conservation of that particular ecosystem in the place of their origin or their natural surrounding thus in situ conservation emphasizes protection of ecosystem of the original habitats or natural environment in situ approach includes protection of a group of typical ecosystem through a network of protected areas on land or sea advantages of in situ conservation in situ method of conservation it provides a wide coverage of where areas as well as spaces a worldwide system of protected and multiple use areas it allows a significant number of indigenous spaces and systems to be protected protection of spaces in the natural surroundings it allows natural selection and community evolution and whereby new communities systems and genetic materials are produced in situ conservation practice provide for economic sustainability by conserving specific spaces of biodiversity a country can utilize it for future economic benefits when a need develops and this diversity is thoroughly examined commercially valuable genetic and biochemical material can be found it ensures conservation of traditional land races of minor crops fruits and vegetables and medicinal plants culinary herbs etc disadvantages of in situ conservation as a conservation strategy in situ conservation is still in its infancy and many things about it are still unknown there is a demographic uncertainty in this method it means a sudden change can occur in the population of indigenous species and that results random events in the survival and reproduction of individuals in situ method is vulnerable to natural disasters like floods fires or droughts this method is prone to environmental uncertainty 
due to unpredictable changes in weather, food supply, and the population of competitors, predators, parasites, etc. There is genetic uncertainty in this method, and due to that, genetic drift or inbreeding that alters the survival and reproductive probabilities of individuals. Human activities like mining, road construction, and related development, water development, livestock grazing, poaching, logging, and removal of vegetations, this put the protected areas under danger. Let's discuss about the objectives of national park, wildlife sanctuaries, and biosphere reserves. The basic objectives of national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, and biosphere reserves are Protection of natural habitats through controlled limited use of spaces. Maintenance of viable number of spaces in protected areas. Establishment and protection of areas through legislation for the conservation of wildlife. Educating the public for wildlife protection. Conducting research in specific areas of wildlife. Let's have a brief comparison between National Park Wildlife Sanctuary and Biosphere Reserve. National Park is associated with the habitat of wild animal species like rhino, tiger, lion, etc. Sanctuary, it is a species oriented as picture plant, great Indian bustard, etc. Biosphere Reserve, it takes into consideration the entire ecosystem. The size ranges from 0.04 to 3162 square kilometer and that of sanctuary 0.61 to 7818 square kilometer and that of biosphere over 5670 square kilometer. National park boundaries, they are marked by legislation. Sanctuaries boundaries, they are not sacrosanct. Biosphere reserves, they are marked by legislation. Disturbance is only limited to buffer zone in national park. And in sanctuary, it is limited disturbance. Disturbance is only limited to buffer zone in the biosphere reserve. Tourism is allowed in national park. Tourism is allowed in sanctuary. And tourism is generally allowed in biosphere reserve. Scientific management is lacking in national park. Scientific management is also lacking in sanctuary. And whereas biosphere reserve is scientifically managed. There is no attention paid to zine pool conservation in national park and same in the case of sanctuary and a great attention is paid to zine pool in conservation in biosphere reserve. Exito conservation. Exito conservation means the conservation of the spaces of biological diversity outside their natural habitats and sometimes the population of spaces they may decline or they may become extinct due to genetic or environmental factors such as inbreeding, habitat loss, disease and overexploitation. In such cases, in situ conservation, they may not prove to be effective and the spaces can be protected from becoming extinct only through maintaining individuals in artificial conditions under human care. Generally, botanical gardens, zoos, aquarium parks, etc are the artificial habitats of for ex situ conservation. The following measures are included under ex situ conservation. Seed storage conservation. It comprises collection of seed samples at one location and they are transferred to a gene bank for storage. In vitro storage comprises collection and maintenance of tissue samples in a sterile pathogen free environment. Seed gene bank includes collection of seed or living material from one location and it transfers and planting at the second site. Large number of accessions of few spaces are usually conserved by this method. Botanic gardens, it referred to collection of seed or living materials from one location and it transfers and maintenance at a second location as living plant location of spaces in a garden. DNA or pollen storage includes collection of DNA or pollen and storage in appropriate usually in a refrigerated condition. Advantages of ex situ conservation. This technique, it helps to maintain genetic variation away from its original location. 
the seed storage technique is efficient and it is reproducible and it requires just a little maintenance to this ex situ conservation technique demographic uncertainties can be monitored and measures can be taken to prevent the undue increase or decrease in the number of species genetic uncertainty is rising from inbreeding and it can be checked and measures can be taken to provide for cross breeding hybridization etc measures against natural disasters can be taken to prevent the biodiversity disadvantages of ex situ conservation ex situ conservation it removes the species from their natural surroundings and preserve them under semi isolated conditions ex situ conservation techniques they are costly and they require high level technology through ex situ conservation the species are susceptible to pest and disease in the seed storage conservation technique the species are frozen all together and when they are released from the frozen state the species evolutionary development is freezed and they lack the genetic adaptations and mutations required to thrive their ever changing habitats in this way a genetic diversity is lost with each generation cycle ex situ conservation involves large areas of land but even then genetic diversity is likely to be restricted captive breeding captive breeding it takes place in restricted or captive areas such as zoos national parks aquariums etc captive breeding provides a means for conserving spaces and that may not survive in the wild captive populations they are maintained for many reasons like conservation education and exhibition of interesting species the goal of the captive breeding programs for endangered species is to establish captive population and that are large enough to be stable and healthy this means maintaining a healthy age structure ensuring that reproduction is reliably successful protecting the population against disease preserving the gene pool to avoid the problems of inbreeding managing small populations in captivity the number of animals present in a zoo is very small so zoos are linked together in cooperative captive breeding programs and this program is to exchange spaces for other zoos for the purpose of breeding the nandakanan zoological park in orissa it is famous for captive breeding for white tigers internationally acclaimed for its large collection of white tigers nandakannan is also the first ever captive breeding center of endangered species that creates awareness of wildlife white tiger the white tiger cubs it is bred in a captivity at nandakannan they have been sent to many zoos within the country and abroad garial and this is the first ever successful captive breeding garial crocodile it is an artificially constructed water tank took place at nandakannan in 1980 poaching and hunting wildlife protection act 1972 it strictly forbids hunting or poaching of wild animals under section 9 and according to section 11 hunting of wild animals is permitted in certain cases If the chief wildlife warden is satisfied and that any wild animal has become dangerous to human life or is disabled or disease beyond recovery and he may permit a permission to hunt such an animal the killing or wounding of wild animal in a self defense or a defense of any other person shall not be an offense any wild animal killed or wounded in defense of any person shall be government property according to section 12 the chief wildlife warden may permit any person to hunt a wild animal for the purpose of education scientific research and management collection of specimens derivation collection or preparation of snake venom for the manufacturing of life saving drugs section 44 of this act it prohibits a person without proper license from undertaking business as manufacturer or dealer in animal articles dealer in trophy trophy means rugs 
skin specimens of animals mounted in hole or in part antler etc taxidermist curing preparation or preservation of trophies cook or serve it in any eating house derive collect or prepare a deal in snake venom biopiracy biopiracy it is defined as privatization and unauthorized use of biological resources by entities that includes corporation universities and governments outside a country which has pre existing knowledge of rare biological resource agencies that indulge in biopiracy illegal claim this exclusive commercial rights to plants animals organs microorganisms and genes commercialization of traditional communities knowledge on biological resource patenting of biological resources preventing biopiracy preventing biopiracy is difficult for several reasons it enforces extra jurisdictional bilateral contracts is difficult because more than one country is involved in this process lack of awareness of products which has potential market value only a few of the harvested samples become new and profitable product collective knowledge it is not easily protected within intellectual property and such knowledge can only be protected as trade secret or copyright need for legal provisions for conserving wildlife wildlife has been hunted since the ages and this was sustainable when forest cover was vast and at that time human population was very low when human population got increased deforestation took place and many animals got exhausted hunting is subsistence and not for commercial interest the illegal trade in wildlife is a global issue from animal parts like tiger bones and musk glands to live reptiles birds and ivory poachers etc the wildlife products they are traded illegally from our country and musk ivory rhino horns tiger and leopard skins and bones for oriental medicines and food due to illegal wildlife trade various species of birds and animals are on the verge of total extinction laws and regulation are the result of policy formulation process as well as the basis for their implementation legal provisions are required to facilitate a balance between the interest of forest owners they are, that are responsible for the source and those for national community which benefits from wildlife at large the legal provisions they provide fines and punishment for the offenders and these act as deterrent for those indulging in illegal trade in the wildlife the national wildlife action plan provides a framework of strategy as well as program for the conservation of wildlife the first ever national wildlife action plan has been adopted in 2000 to 2016 and the indian board of wildlife it was headed by prime minister and it is the apex advisory body which takes care at the implementation of various schemes for wildlife conservation the ministry of environment and forest constitutes the national forest commission to review the working of forest and wildlife sector a national forestry action program it has been formulated as a comprehensive long term plan for the next 20 years the objective of national forestry action program is to bring one third of the area of the country under forest cover and to check deforestation the important acts that concerns wildlife protection acts are the biological diversity act 2002 Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and National Forest Policy Act 1988 and this is why there is a need for legal provisions for conserving wildlife that's all for the session thank you